that I could have some of that energy. <laughs> Those little guys are awesome. Well, um, here we are, Sunday night. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm tired. I feel like I've run a marathon this morning. But, uh, um, hey, that needed to be shared. Amen? Listen, uh, it is high time for the church to, to stand up and declare who we are in this culture. Amen? I mean, I mean, because they ain't going to do it for us. I mean, they will relabel you just like they relabeled those Hebrew boys this morning that we, we read about. But tonight, I, I want to talk about the I Am. I want to talk about the I Am. And when Jesus says uh, that I am the bread of life, it it's really is only uh, the first of seven I Am statements that are recorded in the Gospel of John. And each one of them emphasizing an important aspect of the ministry of Jesus. Jesus came not only to be our Savior, although primarily that's what He came for, was to be our, the sacrifice and to redeem us and, and to purchase us. But He's so much more than that, church. He's our, he's our Redeemer. He's, he's our Healer. He's our Provider. He's, he's the Bread of Life. Uh, uh, he, it's an amazing thing. And in John 6 and 35, it says here, Jesus said to them, I am the Bread of Life. And, and he says, he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. Have you thought about that? Does that do, do you wonder about statements like that? Let me, let me encapsulate it for you. Um, in, in a nutshell here, when Jesus says, I'm the bread of life, he is re referring to his life-giving role that he is the only source of eternal life. Amen? In Matthew, it says in the Beatitudes, Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Amen? The next one is found in John 8 and 12. And then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. Amen? So uh, as we begin, I, I just want to look at all of these I am statements here this evening. And it, it won't take us a long time, but, but I hope that you can leave here tonight with uh, a nugget in your pocket. Something you can pull out and say, hey, this is what I got out of, out of God's Word tonight. This is what I got. I, I want to give you just a, a little bit... Uh, of what I found out. In, in no other chapter in the Bible does Jesus make so many declarations about himself than in this, this chapter. Here he asserts his divine ident identity through a, a, an entire series of I am statements. In chapter 8 and verse 12, Jesus refers to himself as the light of the world. I am the light of the world, and in him, the Bible says, there is no darkness. Amen? Um, I, I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm, I, I'm in, the pro, in, in the process of, of adding on to my, my house a, a garage. And in that garage, I, uh, I don't like work. Have you ever had to work in a dark space? It just ain't no good. And so I made my mind up when I was be beginning to remodel this part of the house for my shop that one thing it was going to be was lit. And so I've got eight, eight foot, double element, LED lights in my garage. And I can just tell you, when you flip the switch on, you ain't stumbling around in the dark, I promise you. You have to wear sunscreen, and uh, but but the interesting thing that I've noticed it, with all of those lights is that there's almost literally no shadows, no shadows because the light's coming from everywhere, and so there's I mean you can you can pick out shadows yeah but but by and if there's like one light over there you got a big shadow over here right there isn't that 
in my shop because it's bright. It's illuminated. Amen? It's a, it's a big word for me, Dennis. It was, but I was able to get that out. But listen, Christ is the light of the world. And do you realize that when we get to heaven, there will be no shadows? No shadows. Why? Because the, our light, where, where does our light primarily come from today? The sun. Our light won't come from the sun in heaven. It will come from the sun, but S-O-N. Amen? And because he's everywhere, it will come from everywhere. He's the light of the world. In chapter 8 and verse 16, he says, I am not alone. I am not alone. The Father is with him. The Holy Spirit is with him. You and I are not alone. In verse 18, it says, I am the one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. Listen, if you've got God witnessing for you, if you've got God rooting for you, if you've got God in your corner, if you've got God uh, uh, testifying for you, you've got it made. Jesus, listen, if you go into a court of law without proper representation, you're probably in big trouble. Amen? But we have an advocate. We have a, a, a defense attorney, if you will, in the Son of God. And uh, here in this verse, he says, I'm the one that bears witness of myself. Jesus testifies of himself, of who he is. You know why? Because he knows who he is. We read about Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego this morning. Those boys knew who they were. And, and there are those of you this, the, this evening, uh, through this morning, that are beginning to learn and understand who you are and what God has in store for your life. Amen? I mean, at some point, we just got to stand up and say, listen, devil, you, you're not messing with me no more. I've had it with you. The illustration that I, that I, that I did this morning, you know, with Scott was, it, it, was it's a, it was a profound thing. We talked about it a little bit uh, later on tonight. We talked about it, and, and he said, when you put those four guys around me, two things, I realized two things. Number one, I couldn't get away, and number two, Nothing was going to get to me. Think about that. Think about that. I couldn't get away. You know what? That's what church is about. Church is about the fellowship and the, com the, the camaraderie and the community and the gathering. I'm grateful for everybody that's able tonight to join us by way of the internet, but it's completely different than gathering together with one another, surrounding one another, loving on one another that's surrounded. Listen, we love you, man. You ain't going nowhere. Amen? And, and here's another thing, devil. If you want to get to him, you're going to go through us first. That's just the way it is. Jesus said in chapter 8 and verse 23, I am from above. He was, he's not of this world. He is not of this world. He is, he is from the, a heavenly kingdom. I am from above. Verse 23, chapter 8, I'm not of this world. Look at chapter 8, 24 and 28. I am He, the Christ. That's a bold declaration. But Jesus knew who He was. He knew where he came from. He knew what his goals were. He knew what his mission was. He knew where he was getting his authority from. And in verse 58, he makes this bold statement, and he says this, I am. Who else made that statement? Pardon me? God did. Wasn't it Abraham that says, uh, who do I tell him? Who do I tell him sent me? You tell him I am. Was it Moses? 
I am. See, claiming to be the light of the world, Ab- or Jesus defined his unique position as, as the one true light for all people, not just for the Jews. Not just for the Jews. Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 49 and 6, I will also give you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be my salvation to the ends of the earth. Listen, how sad would it be for the salvation and for, of our Savior only to be for one people group? But Jesus said this, there's no longer Greek nor Jew. There's no longer slave nor free. He came and died for all of us. In declaring himself to be the light, Jesus was claiming divinity. He was divine. He was from the, from the Father. The Bible In the Bible, light symbolizes the holiness of God. I got some scripture references. Psalm chapter 27 and verse 1. Psalm 36 and verse 9. Acts 9 and verse 3. 1 John 1, 5, it all talks about light, all symbolizing the, the holiness of God. But look at some of these passages. They, we, we, need, we, we got time, amen? We can look at them. We, we can look at them. Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Listen, when you're walking with the Lord, it doesn't make any difference if it's physically dark outside. It doesn't matter if you're being threatened by somebody bigger than you are. None of that stuff matters. When you are walking with God, you win. (laughs) Hey, hey. Greater is he that is than he. You're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. The Lord's the light of my, and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? <laughs> I have the craziest thought. You remember before we built the log house out there and we lived in a chicken coop at a trailer house. And my sister's loved to scare me and they would lock me outside on the back porch of that old chicken coop house whatever you want to call it and then they would shine flashlights down in the field and all the deer that were down there's eyes would light up and it scared me absolutely to death I was petrified That is exactly right. Can I just tell you? If I'd have known what I know now, I, I, I'm, well, maybe I'd have still been scared. But I can tell you this much. Now that I know who the light, my light and my salvation is, I know that I don't have to fear anymore. I don't have to fear the authority. I don't have to fear anybody. Whom shall I fear? The Lord's the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Psalm 36, verse 9 and 10. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. Oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright in heart. Church, that's us. That's us he's talking about. Jesus is the fountain of life. I mean, don't you just hope some of that splashes on you? Amen. 1 John 1, 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. That's our message, church. That's the message to the world. There is no darkness. See, Jesus is not merely a light or another light. He is the one and only true light. And in Him absolutely is no darkness whatsoever. As the light, Jesus illuminates the truth. He gives people spiritual understanding. He reveals to us God Himself and what He has done for us. Look, 
Do you ever just stop and look at your life and, and, say, and, and begin to take inventory of what God has done for you? Take, take, a, take a look at where God has brought you from and where you are today and begin to ponder the, 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 the plans that the Lord has for us. Listen, I know the plans, declares the Lord. Plans for a future and a hope. That's what he's, t that's, he has plans for us. But, our, but those plans include us being faithful to Him. Doing what He's called us to do. Like this morning when, when, I, when I demonstrated the, the drawing the line in the sand. It's often, God often holds back and waits until we do something of, uh, to substantiate our plan. Those boys said, look. We're drawing a line in the sand here. And then, and then God shows up. Sometimes, church, He just wants to know if we have the, the, the guts, the intestinal fortitude. That's probably the nicer, nicer way of saying it. To stand up and be counted for God. He illuminates the truth. He gives us spiritual understanding. You ever wondered about things and all of a sudden it just becomes very clear to you? That's the Holy Spirit giving you spiritual understanding. And He reveals to us God Himself and what He's done for us. Death brings eternal darkness. But to follow Jesus means to never walk in darkness. But to have the light of life. Listen, oh, <laughs> Jake Hess. I don't know if any of you know who Jake Hess is. I knew you knew who Jake Hess was. Jake Hess used to sing a song, and, and it was that death ain't no big deal. And when you know Jesus, death just isn't no big deal. When we follow Christ, accepting Him as our Savior and our Lord and following Him... We are walking in His light. We no longer walk blindly in our sin. The reality is His light shows us our sin and our need for, of forgiveness and guides us along life's path and leads us into eternal life with Him. Isn't it amazing? I don't know, I don't know if this is true of you or not, but it certainly is true of me. Things that used to be fun that would be considered sin since i got saved can't have fun with that no more you might be able to do it but you're not going to have fun because the holy spirit ain't going to let you have fun he's not going to allow you to have enjoyment out of sin it might feel like enjoyment it might look like enjoyment it might seem like enjoyment for a moment but i'll tell you it will never be truly satisfaction and enjoyment because the holy spirit is not going to allow you to enjoy sin We no longer walk blindly in our sin. His light shows us. Look, if you go back to, go to Luke chapter 2. Go to Luke chapter 2. Drop down to verse 25. Luke chapter 2 and verse This is, a, this is an old guy. This is an old guy that has been serving the Lord. He, he, this is an old guy that has made some declarations and staked some claims. And, and, uh, and the Lord is faithful. Listen to what it says here in Luke chapter 2 and verse 25. This is the story of, of Simeon. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been, had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death 
before he had seen the Lord's Christ. So he came by the Spirit in the temple. And when the, par when the parents brought the child in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Simon or Simeon was spiritually in tune with God. He was righteous. He was devout. He was one who was looking forward to the consolation of Israel with the Holy Spirit resting upon him. We don't even know what this guy's occupation was. He had all his life held on to the promise that God had given him of a coming deliverer. So through the Holy Spirit, God promised that Simeon would not die before seeing the Lord's Messiah. Simeon hoped that in the future that God had promised to, and stands forever in, in Scripture as a model of devotion and faithfulness to God. Church, that's what we need today. That kind of devotion, that kind of dedication. Look, I'm not moving. I'm not moving until I hear from God. You know, we used to call it back in the day, praying through. We, we've, we have lost that sense of coming to the altar and, and praying through and, and, and praying until we touch heaven and praying until God shows up and does something. We are an impatient people. He hoped in the future that God had promised and forever stands in Scripture as a model of devotion and faithfulness. He was, he was old. Simeon was old. He had a lot to think about. Right, Mike? We got a lot of stuff that we can think about. We've seen some things in our life. I can remember as a young man listening to pastors and listening to them tell story after story after story. And I remember thinking as a brand new youth pastor, man, I wish I had some stories like that that I could begin to tell. Well, guess what? Now it's, what, 30-some years later, and guess what? I got some stories. I got some stories. I've seen some crazy things happen. In ministry, I've seen some crazy things happen in the in the in 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 the I guess, in the flesh realm. I guess we saw one. We, we saw something really crazy just the other day, didn't we, Mike? Had it all planned out. Was cutting a tree. It was a heavy leaner going the wrong way. We wanted it to go that way. We got a jack. Put a jack in it. Started cutting on it. Started jacking on it. Tree said, I don't want to go that way. I want to go that way. And squirted the jack right out the back of the stump and tipped right over backwards. It was awesome. It was awesome. Tore Bob's power line down. <laughs> Fell right in front. And I'm, when I say right in front, I mean right in front of Mike's pickup. I thought, man... I'm going to have to buy Mike a new pickup. A limb about that big around laid right on his hood, right down the windshield, right down the hood, right over this little plastic bug deflector on the front. I don't think it even cracked it. It just, it just fell down there and just stopped. And we were scattering like fleas. <laughs> Even Mike. Man, he was just... It was awesome. We started counting heads. Everybody was still upright. Nobody was bleeding. Thank you, Lord, for watching over us. That's what we said. Thank you. It's, that stuff happens. God already knew that was going to happen. He saw that. 
from before the found. Listen, he knows our days, right? I don't know if he laughed, but I'll bet he did. I bet he was like, watch this. This is going to be good. But we now have a memory together. You and me and Thomas and Bob, we have a memory together. You can say whatever you want. I believe we saw the provision of the hand of God in that moment. Absolutely believe it. I'm old and have much to ponder. The reality is, no doubt, Simeon had disappointments in his life to worry over. Probably had things that, if he wanted to, he could bemoan them. He probably had things that he could regret. But rather than dwell on the, rough, the life's rough ride, Simeon, even in his old age, looked to God's future with brightness and with hope. Listen, don't get hung. I was mad. I'll just be honest with you. I was mad when that tree tipped over. I was ticked off. I was kicking rocks. I didn't, I didn't break into Tourette's. But I was close. But I was mad. Partially because of pride. Mostly because of pride. Because the whole job had went really smooth and, and I had one thing that I was not going to have happen. I, I was not going to tear down Bob's power line. That was my plan. Wasn't it, Thomas? I'm not going to tear that thing down. Just like that. It's down. It sometimes takes us a while, church, to move through the, 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 the rough ride that we seem to be on and, and, and the places that, that would, we'd, we'd want to worry over and wrap our mind around, hey, we've got a lot to be thankful for in, in all of this. Simeon's secret was in his worship and his expectation for God. Worship is so much more than the piano and the drums and the guitars and the vocals. Because if we can't worship without all of that, we're not worshiping. Worship should be something that just comes from us. Worship and praise were a natural thing to Simeon. They were the center of his life. Nothing is so bleak as a day without the hope of tomorrow. With God, every day has hope and good cheer. Every day we have a brand new day. His mercies are new every morning. You want to talk about do-overs? God gives you a do-over every day. His mercies are new every day. Every day, God gives us hope and good cheer. Neither old age or grim circumstances should keep you and I from God's comfort sufficient for your needs today. God knows everything you're going to go through tomorrow. Yet, there are those that will lose sleep tonight over that. Don't do it. Cast your cares on Him because He cares for you. We talked about it at great length on Wednesday night about worry and, and, and those kinds of things. Simeon refers to Jesus as a light for revelation. The reality is Jesus Christ is the fullest manifestation of God's glory that His people have ever seen. I've never seen a physical manifestation of God, but I've seen enough of what He has done to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that He is who He said He was. 
Luke, writing to the Gentiles, pointed out that from the very beginning, God's plan was to offer salvation to Gentiles as well as to the Jews. There are few metaphors that capture Jesus' mission quite as well. Light makes the stillness come alive. Light settles fear. Light reveals mystery. Light enables relationships. I don't know about you, but when I was in the dark, I was scared. But how many of you know if somebody just turns the light on, all of a sudden, fear is gone. Why? Because light dispels the darkness, reveals everything that is in the darkness. Jesus is God's is God in the flesh. He's eternal light breaking into a spiritually dark world. Jesus is your light. He is not a distant sun, remote and driven by physics laws. Jesus is the light of your life, your courage. He's your enabler. He will give you strength. Church, we need to start every day by turning on the light. Every day, by turning on the light. A moment of meditation on God's Word. A prayer of dedication to live for God all day. He's the I Am. He's our soon coming King. He's the, the lily of the valley, the rose of Sharon, the bright and morning star, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the Alpha and the Omega. I mean, He's all of that and so much more. So tonight, I, I just want to again open these altars. I know that there are some of you that, that need prayer. Uh, Marty Womack and Marty and Dan Womack are, are, are friends of, of ours. They're personal friends of ours. They've stayed in our home. Um, they live up in Washington. Um, Marty is, is in the hospital with internal uh, issues. I don't know exactly what they are. Uh, I haven't really heard, but we need to pray for them. And Bob's back is still giving him fits, and uh, he doesn't even know what he did. But uh, he, he, he's in pain, and he's laying with ice and such on his back, so we need to pray for Bob. And then for Judy's son-in-law, Larry, uh, we need to pray for him. His entire left side, I think it is, is completely shut down. The, there's a blood clot that is very deep in his brain that uh, uh, from the, the, the stroke and it was longer than four hours and apparently if they get to you within before four hours they can give a medication that will dissolve the blood clot. Well that window closed and they weren't able to so now they just have to leave it there. It's too far in to operate on to get to that way and so uh, literally... I guess you could say he is in the hands of God. And uh, <laughs> let me just tell you something. There ain't a better place to be than in the hands of God. And so we just need to pray and believe that God will, will take care of that, take care of Dodie and the girls. And, and uh, ultimately, I pray that, that, that this is, is uh, something of a wake-up call, something of a, of a, of a turning point. Listen, God uses these very kinds of things to transition and to turn people that maybe we just get so comfortable going down this road of life that we just kind of, God, I got this. And we just put God on the back burner and, and uh, we just bounce down the road. But we have moments like this and all of a sudden God becomes for, for, right in the forefront. He's right, he's right up close and they want somebody that is close to God. Amen. So I just pray that, that ultimately God gets a hold of them and a, a, arrests them by His Spirit and, and transitions them and transforms them and, and uh, all of that. And I, believe all, I believe God can heal him. I mean, I believe God can pluck that blood clot out of there, dissolve it, disintegrate it, let it just pass through his entire system and bring back the... the, the, the Mo, 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 the momentum, mo, 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 bleh, something. Br bring back his, his, 
Huh? Momentum. Not momentum. He don't need no momentum right now. He just needs some movement. Amen? That's what he needs. Mobility. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Mobility. Amen? Father, I thank you for this day, and I thank you for uh, this morning's message. God, I thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you for tonight, for your presence again in this place, for all the, 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 the members of the worship team tonight to just serving you and worshiping and singing, Lord, and, and for your word. And Lord, uh, we do lift all these names to you tonight. And God, we know that you know way more about what's going on in every one of those situations uh, than we do. But God, you called us to, to call their names, to call them out, to pray, to lift them before you, Father. And so that's exactly what we're doing. And God, I just pray tonight as we close out this service, as we open these altars up, Lord, that people will, will not be in a hurry, but that, Lord, we will take a few moments and bow our knees, bend our knees at, these, at, 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 at this platform, at this altar area, God, and just begin to cry out to you and say, God, we, we just need your touch. And, and Father, I just thank you for it. I know there are those that, that, that want us to agree with them in prayer, and so God, we'd be glad to do that. Lord, we just thank you for, for everyone that is here tonight, those watching by way of the internet. God, those that maybe are traveling, God, watch over them, I pray. Father, I just thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your grace and for your mercy. God, have your way in your people. Lord, and I thank you for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want prayer, I'm going to ask you to come on up here. Uh, if you want to just spend some time in prayer, Tammy's going to play and, and uh, we'll agree. We'll agree with you.